Hey guys, and welcome to another Kivi tutorial. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how we can get kind of mouse input and also uh, like finger input. So like if someone was for to example, touch the screen with their thumb or like drag something around or whatnot, uh, this will work for all of that. And then I think in the next video, just give you a quick kind of summary of what's going on. I want to get into drawing some things. So for example, maybe you want to use Kivi for some kind of game development or something like that. How can we draw kind of objects, shapes, uh, move those around? And then uh, we'll get into probably some more advanced stuff like creating multiple windows, creating better applications where, for example, uh, if you get the correct, correct login, it brings you to a page that gives you like your secret notes or something. I don't really know exactly what I want to do, but if you guys have any ideas, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, I'm thinking maybe sometime in the future, I want to build kind of like a big GUI with this and walk you guys through how to really go into developing a proper application with Kibi. Um, but no promises on that. It's just kind of an idea that I had in my head. So today uh, we're getting input. So what we need to do actually is we're going to have to re-import our widgets. Uh, so from kibi.uix.widgets uh, import and we'll just import widget like that. And sorry, this is widget in case you didn't read along. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to re recreate this class. So I'm just going to create a class. I'm going to call it touch. It's going to stand for like getting our touch input. It's going to inherit from widget. And then in here, I'm going to define a few functions and we'll go through and talk about what they are. So the first one is going to be on underscore. Uh, oh, and they even have it here on touchdown. Okay. And let's define another one. So define on uh, touch move and we'll define on touch up like that. Perfect. So we've already got three. So we can just pass in here for right now. Uh, but essentially what these functions are going to do is they have one uh, input parameter, right? So we have touch and what's just going to happen is essentially when we touch down on the screen, uh, we will get the position or we'll be able to get the position of where we pressed uh, and a few, a few other pieces of information as well, but we're not going to really use those. And then same thing with uh, move and up. So when we're moving while touching the screen, we'll be able to get that information. And then if we release, we'll be able to see where we released, when we released, whatnot. Um, so some useful functions. And again, since we're inheriting from widget, this means that these functions just work on any, um, what do you call it? Like a grid layout, uh, box layout, float layout, whatever you're using, the, these work on those. Um, and yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So let's just go in our KV file. I want to just create a small window here. So actually, sorry, back to the KV file. Let's return touch first so we don't forget. Let's go to the KV file. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to say uh, touch. And in here, I'm just going to create a button just to prove to you that indeed we can put things inside, right? So we'll do button, let's say text equals, uh, say my BTN. Why not? And that's all we need for our KV file. I just want to add something to the screen. So if we're on touch down, obviously that means like we press down or we click the mouse button down. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to print and we'll say mouse down and then we can just print out touch. And if we do this, it'll print out like the position of the touch for us. Okay. So same thing with on touch move, we'll print um, mouse move. Okay. And then we'll print touch again. And I assume you guys can probably guess what we're going to be printing here. We'll say mouse up and touch. Okay, so let's run this and just see invalid property name. Ah, yes, text equals. I'm sure you guys all saw that and got mad at me. So text colon. Uh, now let's run this. So we have my button obviously here and just look in the console in the bottom left while I'm doing this. When I press mouse down, mouse up gives us the S position and the position um, S position, I believe stands for like relative position where this is like the absolute position. Um, so that's actually useful because for example, like with our float layouts, maybe we were like 30% X. We don't know the actual X value of that button. So we'd want to use the S position to figure out where our mouse is. So now notice if I drag along, um, it should keep going. Yeah. You can see that just spamming mouse move because I was just dragging along the screen. And then we get, uh, excuse me there, we get mouse up at the bottom. So you can see how that works. Now, just something to notice here. If I do try to click my button, it's no longer actually clicking. Like it's not highlighting. And that's because, and I believe this is the reason someone correct me if I'm wrong, but when we have, like we override this, uh, what do you call it? This function mouse down, uh, so this function already exists and this, uh, what do you call it? Or touch move or whatnot. They already exist inside of this widget class. And when we create them in here, what we're doing is we're overriding the functionality of the function that's in the widget class. So usually what would happen is on touch down, uh, that function would trigger the 
let's say button to change colors, right? So what we're doing essentially when we override this is we're changing that functionality and we're removing all the functionality of the other function and implementing our own. So if we wanted our button to change uh, like state when we clicked it, what we'd have to do is we have to import this object property. So you know what, let's just do it. So from Kiwi dot properties, uh, import object property. And then remember how we create an object property. So let's just say BTN uh, equals object property, we'll say none. And I believe in the Kiwi file, we just got to create a global variable here. So let's say uh, BTN equals BTN. Uh, is it colon? Yeah, I think it's colon. We'll see though. And we'll say ID BTN. And then what we can do is we can say, for example, on touchdown, we'll say BTN dot, uh, what was it? BTN dot maybe color opacity. Opacity, uh, we can try that equals 0.5. Uh, and we'll see if this works. I could have just absolutely butchered that btn. It's gonna have to be self dot btn uh, opacity opacity. There you go. Okay, so let's run this. And when I click it, now you can see that the opacity changes. Now, obviously, I would probably want to well actually change this opacity back when we release the button. So that's an afterthought. So we'll do opacity equals one. And now. If we click it, we hold down, we release it. Now our button is actually pressing properly like it should have been before. Um, so that's how you can do that. I know it's not an ideal way to kind of fix that, but when you override these functions, that's what you have to do. So I know this has been a short video, but this is all I'm going to show for right now. In the next video, we'll get into some more advanced stuff. I want to do some drawing. We're going to mess with this more. If you guys have any ideas for any videos, other videos you'd like to see, please let me know. Uh, and with that being said, I'll see you guys in another video.